Wow, that was, that was cool. Well, again, okay. So again, we have the sunspot. It's a pair of sunspots. This is what causes it. So if the cool prominence gas is confined by its high magnetic field and the hot surrounding gas. The gas streams through the prominence in a variety of patterns associated with sunspots. And we can see here a picture of how that works. It creates this, this, this looks like a magnet over here, doesn't it? If you kind of look at this picture, let me change colors here. Uh, if you look at this picture right here, all right, um, you'll see um, the, uh, it kind of looks like a magnet, like a bar magnet. Well, that's because it's a magnetic field. So there's this magnetic field that causes these sunspots, or these prominences, the sunspots at first, and then the prominence. Here's an actual picture over here of a prominence on the surface of the sun taken with a cool telescope, the SOHO telescope which we talked about earlier. All right, there's another uh, type of thing that can also happen. That is a solar flare, the flares. Okay, now, solar flares give birth, or sunspots, pardon me, give birth to solar flares. They're brief, bright eruptions of hot gas in the chromosphere. And so here we have the sun. This is taken with um, kind of a false color image right here, the green background. And you can see the solar flare right here. So there's just a bright eruption of hot gas in the chromosphere. It brightens over minutes or sometimes hours, but not enough to affect the total, uh, total light output. So you have this flare and you think, oh man, oh my gosh, there's so much more energy coming out, you know, and it might be hit the earth over here or something like that. Um, not true, because it's just not enough. But it's just caused by, um, well, it's caused by sunspots, which is this magnetic field thing going on, right? Now, well, I think we ought to watch a video clip on solar. flares let's do that right down okay well that was cool solar flares video hey one last uh, thing to talk about one thing that's interesting about the solar flares when solar flares happen they send a stream of particles towards the earth um, it, not just towards the earth but you know if you've got the sun it sends it in all directions but of course one of the directions will be the directions where the earth is up here there or something. and when it hits the northern uh, latitudes of the earth it kind of hits what we call our ionosphere and it creates what's called the aurora borealis and so we can see the aurora borealis um, on the, in the night sky if you kind of live in Alaska or somewhere really far north. And I think it might be true south. I don't think, I don't know. I just think it's just up north. I don't know. Anyways, uh, that's one of the impacts on the earth is that we can see um, the aurora borealis. That's pretty cool. And then uh, lastly, let's talk about something called the solar wind. Now, what is wind here on earth? Well, wind is just gas that moves, air. It's moving in a particular direction. Well. The sun is made of gas, and so the sun sends out um, in all directions a small amount of its gas. Most of its gas stays within, keeping that um, hydrostatic equilibrium we talked about in the previous podcast. But here we have the solar wind, the wind. And so because of the corona's high temperature, it gives its atoms enough energy to exceed the escape velocity of the sun. Remember, we learned about escape velocities in a previous chapter. And so um, it escapes it, and it shoots it out. Boom! All right. Boom. Okay, as these atoms stream into space, they form the solar wind, which is this tenuous gas of hydrogen and helium that sweeps across the entire solar system. Now, a lot of people say, oh my gosh, the sun's getting lighter and lighter and lighter because it's losing so much energy and so much particles due to the solar wind. The interesting thing is it's not enough to really worry about. It's just an insignificant amount. Okay? Now, just to give you kind of an idea, the values at the Earth's orbit, okay, so when the, when the wind hits us, okay, it's about a few atoms per cubic centimeter, but it's going 500 kilometers per second. That's pretty fast. Now, what does it mean, few atoms per cubic centimeter? Everybody take your finger, meow, that's a finger, on your hand, all right, meow. All right, and take your fingernail. Okay, your fingernail is about one centimeter wide. So if you say, when I say one cubic centimeter, take a box that's one fingernail width by one fingernail width by one fingernail width, or one centimeter cubed, one centimeter, a centimeter, and a one centimeter, and then you would find a few atoms in there, just one, two, three. But, yeah, that's how you do it. And at some point, when it gets further and further spread apart, it mingles with interstellar space. Now, the solar wind causes interesting things for the Earth. It's also part, that's actually the, the stuff that we also get that Aurora Borealis thing going um, from. Okay? So, um, that's the end of this podcast. We'll see you on.